All right, welcome to step two. This is quite often one of the hardest things for marketers, and particularly aspiring marketers and marketing students. Market segmentation requires you to make a series of decisions that have significant consequences and which aren't binding. If you don't make your market segmentation decisions, it also has a consequence, and the consequence is you will waste a lot of time and effort. Coca-Cola is often held up as the big shiny example of the undifferentiated product, except that undifferentiated product is significantly heavily segmented. So all the way through, you want to be looking at the market leaders going, what are the segments? and segmentation strategies that they are using. How are they segmenting? What can I learn from that? Whilst at the same time, looking at your own segments going, how do I address this segment? What influence do I have within? What influence do they have on me? And how well is my documentation and my idea of what the segment looks like held up against how the segment has performed in practice? So, Kicking it off, market segmentation, information gathering, prioritization, pick a target, and then act on it. So round one, you need to be able to describe your audience to me. You also need to be able to describe it to yourself and anyone else who might be interested in you. Particularly, I'm going to highlight Instagram. Instagram has demonstrably had average users people who have put a lot of time and effort into the use of their Instagram, who have a very clear understanding of who their audience is, be approached by sponsors to receive gifts, payments, and commercial arrangements, all because the Instagram user could describe who their audience was and how that audience matched the would-be sponsor. So sponsorship, finance, revenue, money, earning things, all these come together when you have your audience segmentation down. So there's a bunch of different ways you can describe your audience, but the key is who are they and what do you know about them and how well can you then meet their needs. So your four questions, your planned inputs are who's the audience, where can you find them? One of the things you want to be thinking is what happens if you go for that audience? Do you have a good match? So now you start thinking about audience fits, now you start thinking about how well you've got the resources to address this particular market. Yes, it might be a market you deeply desire, but do you have the resources to serve that market and serve it well enough so that market will be satisfied? What else you want to be thinking about at this point in time is, particularly if you're doing an audience segmentation for your specific platform. So you're doing a segmentation for your blog, you want to think, where else on the internet could I find the audience I want so that I can go there to advertise to bring them back to where my core product is? So you want to be thinking, who are these people? Where can we find them? Second thing you want to be doing is you want to set some prioritization. Which of you, because at this point in your segmentation, you also want to be generating a wide number of segment possibilities. You want a range of people. You want to be thinking about who your best case, who your worst case. You want to make a set of decisions, break people up into categories, and then come down and say, well, who do I want to address? What's my prioritization? And I've given you a four, a two by two matrix that you've got the dead weights, no short term and long term value, the slow fuse, no payoff in the immediate, large pay, sustainable payoff down the uh, track. The quick burns, it's all or nothing now. These are the people who will come in, they will throw cash at you, but they'll be gone tomorrow. Hipsters. Big market, take them. Finally, you got your gold mine. And I like the gold mines because they're the ones that you can make money from immediately because you're offering something that is of interest to them and you can build the relationship and the loyalty to maintain them 
so that you have this ongoing, mutually beneficial relationship. So prioritization, pick your priority, who do you want, who are you going to go after? Then, target selection. There are multiple ways of doing this. I'm going to advocate for you for this semester, where do you have a strong match between what you can offer and what a market looks like it wants? For this semester, because it's a, it is a subject, it's an assessment task, it's a simulation activity, even if it's being done in real life, in real world, in real time, work to your strength. Go with your strength rather than, hey, here's, a real, here's an audience I really want to address, I have to invest a lot of time and effort to address it, versus here's no, a strength I have and it fits an audience who could be of interest. So look at what you want to do, short, medium, long term, look at your options. Then start making decisions around this target, say, who is priority one? Who's your main target? Who do you want to be writing your tweets to, your taking photos for, preparing your blog to address? Who's your primary audience? Then take your objectives and turn them into tactics. Start looking at this and going, okay, how do I address, how do I address the audience to get this outcome? So you're looking at this in terms of challenges and opportunities, but you're also looking at starting now to break it down from I have an objective to I have an audience to address that audience to meet my objective, what is my tactic? First up, positioning strategies come back in. Where are you going to sit? What other strategy do you want to use? Attributes and benefits, user application, pick, position, build a strategy, build a tactic. Product user positioning, do you want to position this as Amazon does of, if you like this, then you'll like that. Price quality, do you want to be putting a premium? Do you want to be doing some differentiation between what it costs someone to use it, different strategy levels? Again, decisions. Does your, will your audience be more interested in being with people like them or determining quality by themselves? Or are they driven? Is your segmentation variable about the benefit? Is your segmentation variable about I want the kind of person who's going to use a phone as a camera, therefore I'll sell them a camera case, versus I want the kind of person who will use a phone as a phone, therefore I'll sell them an earpiece. Then also starting to look in here to the communication, cultural symbol positioning. If you are selling yourself or you're selling an idea or an ideology on the internet, this is a huge area. You're building a personal brand, you're building a connection to a series of statements, beliefs, and views. Then you're also playing the option of, uh, cor I said, corporate word association. What type of products are like yours? Who's similar to yours in terms of product offerings? Who, when somebody thinks about your product, what other competitors would they be thinking about? How do you match up against them? And then, obviously, competitor positioning. You also want to be knowing here, one of the things in the competitive positioning is you want to be thinking about when you are creating your plan in your position, competitors can become allies. And we've seen this a lot actually in Vine, that you will see top, high profile, very popular Vine accounts collaborating. Because whilst they're both mindful that each are taking audience from the other, if they think about it in terms of being a collaborative game rather than a zero-sum game. When they team up, all of them get, have an opportunity to pick up an increased broader audience base. So competitors can also be allies, but you want to be mindful who, when someone looks at your site, who would they think could be a possible rival? And how do you position against them? And do you want to position against them? Repositioning is going to be less of an issue for you this semester because you're kicking off until it comes to pivot time. If you decide to pivot, then you want to reposition. So, big thing about this section is that it does involve a set of decisions and you have to commit to those decisions. 
the biggest destructive thing you can do to yourself, to your strategy, to your brand, is to refuse to make that early initial decision of who is my priority segment, who am I targeting. If you don't make that initial call, you are just making things intentionally difficult for you. With our segmentation, this is like trying to drive to a place you haven't been to before by closing your eyes and refusing to listen to your navigator. To start with, if you get out of the garage, you'll be lucky. But secondly, it's a dumb way to do things. And there are smarter ways to do things, and I'd like you to do things the smarter, easier, do less, with more, for a better outcome.